In cases of acute hemorrhage, it's important to look for signs of active hemorrhage and a bleeding source, as this can play a vital role in the treatment choice. The source of active bleed can be subtle and easily missed, so it's important to know what to look for. In general, there are three important signs to memorize. The first sign is a direct sign of active bleed, while the latter two are indirect signs. However, they are just as important to recognize. These three signs include active extravasation of contrast, pseudoaneurysm, and an abrupt cutoff of the vessel. Before we go into the appearance on CT, we should first discuss the protocol used. The protocol can vary between institutions, but in general, the CT performed for acute bleed will contain arterial and venous phase, and in many cases, a non-enhanced CT. This, however, does not include a CT brain for acute bleed. Non-enhanced CT is important to get a baseline appearance, and this is especially important for post-operative patients as surgical clips and other dense material can cause problems in the interpretation. This is also applicable for calcifications and other dense structures. The arterial phase will give a good view of the vascular anatomy, arterial vascular injury, and the potential source of arterial bleed. This phase is also helpful for pre-surgical planning when applicable. The venous phase increases the sensitivity to pick up the subtle bleeds. This phase is also important to help differentiate between extravasation of contrast and a pseudoaneurysm. So how do these signs look on a three-phase CT protocol? As previously mentioned, the non-enhanced CT is mainly helpful to get a baseline appearance of any dense material, but a fluid fluid level on non-enhanced CT is one clue to active bleed, although not diagnostic. Let's start with the extravasation of contrast media. This is a direct visualization of the plus of contrast exiting the vessel. Now let's imagine there's a defect on the vessel wall. As we administer contrast, we will see it leak outside the vessel. On CT in the arterial phase, the extravasation will appear as a plus of contrast not conforming to any vessel shape, and this indicates also an arterial source of the bleed. On the venous phase, the plus will grow even bigger and become more apparent since extravasation increases between the scans. This explains why the venous phase increases the sensitivity. A pseudoaneurysm will appear in a similar fashion, however the form is often round and well demarcated unlike the extravasation of contrast since the bleeding is contained. This explains why we can see a flow go into and out of the pseudoaneurysm on ultrasound, a so-called yin-yang sign. On the venous phase the blood will retain the shape and not grow. Pseudoaneurysm carry a high risk of rupture and therefore need urgent attention. An abrupt cutoff of a vessel is best seen on the arterial phase. This sign can be very subtle and often represents a vessel thrombosis secondary to a vessel injury. This sign, however, cannot be distinguished from a vasospasm. Now, I would like to add a few pitfalls to avoid before we finish the lecture. Some obvious pitfalls may be related to the artifacts from hip prosthesis, and in these cases, a delayed phase can help identify the active bleed. Chronic changes can result in vessel occlusion, so always look for atherosclerotic changes and, if possible, a previous CT. Finally, the penal pulpar plus. The location and the bilateral nature is characteristic and should help to avoid calling this a vascular injury.